few weeks ago when we talked about the 280 Remington, I had a request to talk specifically about the 260 Remington also. And I thought, hey, that's a good idea because there's definitely a story to be told here. But we can't tell the story of the 260 Remington without also telling the story of the 6.5 Creedmoor. And what this comes down to is the old versus the new. I knew there was going to be an interesting story here with the 260 Remington as soon as I started thinking about this because honestly I didn't even understand the 260 Remington. Okay, we can't talk about the 260 Remington without also talking about the 6.5 Creedmoor. There's no way around that one. Okay, and we've got the 260 that is a, it's a dying cartridge. And then we've got the 6.5 Creedmoor which has peaked in popularity but it is extremely still extremely popular. Okay, why is one doing so well and the other didn't and they're identical? And how do you even compare these two when they're identical? I mean, and that's what I kept going in circles on. You can't say one's better or worse than the other. They're the same. Okay, and I know everybody can point to the 6.5 Creedmoor and say, well, the shoulder angle's different and the shoulder's pushed back and one and eight rate of twist versus one and nine standard on the 260 and it, it does better with the longer high BC bullets. Okay. But then the 260, more powder capacity, slightly higher velocity. It's going to feed and extract more reliably. Okay. So we have some legitimate differences. Except for they don't amount to absolutely anything. 260 Remington. That's going to feed and extract more reliably. And it is. Okay, the case design is based on 308, which is was a military cartridge. More taper to the case. That's why the tapers there. But has anybody ever really had a problem with feeding and extraction with 6.5 Creedmoor? Okay, the difference is amount to nothing. The 6.5 Creedmoor shooting 140 grain bullets more accurately because of the shoulder pushed back and one and eight rate of twist. Except for the 260, you can drive tax with the 140 grain bullets also. <laughs> There's no difference here. Okay, so how do we compare them? I mean, what's going on here? And then that's when it hit me. The 260 represents the old. Okay, and the 260. I remember when the 260 Remington came out in 1997, and I thought, hey, that's a great idea for a cartridge. Now, there was some drama that went on there with Sammy and B Square had actually tried to standardize the 6.508, which is what's the Wildcat cartridge that the 260 comes from. That it was popular with target shooters. Okay, so B Square applied to have it standardized. Well, then later on, Remington applied to have it standardized as 260, and somehow. Their paperwork got pushed way ahead of B-square. All right, so that's kind of, yeah, anyway. But still, it's a great cartridge, regardless of who standardized it, and it had been popular with target shooters, but Remington marketed it to hunters. And I remember it came out, and I was like, okay, that just might be the perfect deer cartridge, or at least intermediate to short-range deer cartridge. It was sort of that sweet spot between the 7 millimeter 08 and 243. The 257 Roberts had filled that spot for a lot of years, but it had disappeared. The 6.5 by 55 Sweet had filled that spot for a lot of years, but it had disappeared. Which, for that matter, why are we talking about either one of these with the 6.5 by 55 Sweet out there? But anyway. Okay, 260 was introduced though, and, and 1997, and I thought, it is a good cartridge. And then, you know, all the magazines were talking about it and, you know, trying to push it like they do with all the new cartridges. And, and the 260, it was starting to catch on. I mean, it wasn't wildly popular, but it was becoming popular. It was an absolute, just ideal deer cartridge, and deer hunting is the most popular form of hunting here in the United States. So, yeah. It did okay until the 6.5 Creedmoor came along. Okay, so what was different here? Again, 
the cartridges are identical. We point to them to the little minute things that mean absolutely nothing. But why did this explode in popularity? And this was introduced in 2007, except for it didn't explode in popularity. The target shooters, uh, they saw some use for it, and they started using the 6.5 creep more. And of course, Hornaday's pushing it. You know, they're trying to put their marketing spin on it. But it was several years later before the 6.5 creep more really started to take off on its own, and it was what 2015, 16. 17 before it really started, I mean, peaking and becoming just, that's all you heard. What changed in that time? Well, what changed was YouTube. YouTube just, I mean, seriously, that's, that's the difference. That's what made the 6.5 cream more, social media, YouTube in particular. And, okay, the old versus the new here. It isn't the cartridges. Again, they're the same. It's everything that surrounds them. Okay, so when YouTube took off, and you keep this in mind too. Content creators are all about what's new, what's hot. That's what gets clicks on videos. That's why, you know, once a week we're looking at Hornaday's brand new, latest and greatest, the end all be all best cartridge ever introduced that's almost as good as something that's already existed for 60 years. <laughs> YouTube creators have to have something new to talk about so that you've got something new to watch and we know you'll click on it, that's why most do it. Okay, so YouTube creators are just having a fit over the new cartridge. The, the, new, the young people, they're looking at it up. Look at the 6.5 cream more. You know, they probably have never even heard of the 260, couldn't care less about it. But all of the YouTube creators are raving about the 6.5 cream more. And it's not just hunters now. Now it's long range shooters, uh, the tactical guys, target shooters, plus hunters are starting to jump on board with this. And the rifles are suddenly changing. Okay, so the 260, this came out in just, you know, standard bolt-action rifles. That's you know, hunters. But all of a sudden, you've got the ARs, AR-10s were a little slow coming out to 6.5 creed more, but eventually they came around to it. But all of a sudden, you've got shooters on YouTube with uh, suppressors, well, brakes to start with, brakes on the rifles, then suppressors the big target rifles, big scopes, and they're out there shooting a long ways. And keep in mind, video is a visual medium. I mean, it's all about what we can see. That's why a lot of you aren't going to be too interested in this because, hey, that's just me out here in my shop talking. There's nothing to see here. All right. But all of a sudden, you're watching nothing fancy shooting out in the desert six yard, 600 yards just you know, popping off rounds with an AR, or running a bolt gun, or whoever the hot creators were then. Okay, that's everybody that jumped on the 6.5 Creedmoor bandwagon. They weren't just jumping on the 6.5 Creedmoor bandwagon. They were jumping on the latest and greatest rifles and all that went with it bandwagon. The new scopes, the dialing in your turrets, the shooting long distances, and everything else. 260, again, it, it came out for just your standard hunters. And perfect example of difference in philosophy here between the old and the new. Bullet weight. Okay, both of these. Approximately, you push a 120 grain bullet 3,000 feet a second, a 130 grain bullet 2,900 feet per second, and a 140 grain bullet 2,800 feet per second. Okay, well everybody now, when you say long range, they're automatically thinking, okay, the 140 grain bullet, that's your long range bullet, higher BC. For the old, it's just the complete opposite. Okay, when I think long range, I'm thinking the 120 grain bullet, and then the 130, and I'm thinking for the 140 grain bullet, that's what I want to use in the woods at close range so I don't mess up much meat because it's traveling so much slower. And then the lighter bullets are going to shoot flatter 
than the heavy 140 grain bullets until you get out to a certain distance. That's when your ballistic coefficient becomes important. And yeah, if we take the trajectories out to 500 yards, 600, I hadn't done the math on these. I don't really care at this point, but <laughs> okay, somewhere around there, the 140 grain bullet is going to have a flatter trajectory because of that BC. The lighter bullet's going to slow down and start dropping. Okay, but within normal hunting ranges, your lighter bullet's going to be the flatter shooting bullet. The bolt action hunting rifle. And yes, this is my Christmas present. No, I'm not going to tell you what it's chambered in until the end of the video, but we'll talk about that then. But this hadn't changed in over a hundred years. The, the basic shape, form, and function of the bolt action hunting rifle. All right, you had the production rifles coming out here in the U.S. in the 1920s. Winchester Model 54, Remington Model 30, um, Savage Model 20. All those were in the 1920s. They got tweaked and refined. Okay, the Model 54 got turned into the Model 70 in 1936. Monte Carlo stocks. Okay, that started getting really popular in the 60s. What well, that was a tweak to the shape of the stock to account for the scopes that were a new thing, new technology. So, yeah, there's been some little tweaks and modifications. The material, stock material, fiberglass instead of walnut. Okay, which some of us still prefer to walnut, but another story. But it's still the same thing. Okay, well, this evolved over that entire period to become just an absolutely perfect hunting rifle. All right, and the old is boring when we're talking about hunting, but that's what hunters used to want was boring. We want to take our rifle, we want to go to the woods, shoot our game animal, put it on the truck, and carry it back to the house, put it in the freezer. Boring. Everybody wants new and exciting now. Okay. Muzzle brakes, all right, new and exciting. It makes the rifle shoot like 22s. The problem is, is the noise. Okay, so now you got to wear electronic hearing protection out in the woods. Well, you don't have to. A lot of people don't. A lot of hunters don't. They have muzzle brakes. They're not wearing hear protection, hearing protection. And it's absolutely murder on the hearing when they shoot those rifles with muzzle brakes. They're doing serious damage there. Ten years from now, are the muzzle brakes still going to be popular for hunting? I mean, I can carry this out, and I don't need electronic ear muffs or anything else. And I can shoot this, and my hearing's going to be okay. I'm not going to go to the range without hearing protection, but I can fire a shot in the woods and take a game at them. Okay, so as far as the cartridges themselves, I don't think the 260 has much of a future. The 6.5 Creedmoor is just far too popular, even though they're identical. Built ammo is going to be available for a long time, but I think it is going to disappear. It, it's going to become another obsolete cartridge. Those that really want to shoot it can. All right. As far as everything else, though, and the new versus old. I don't know how much of the new on everything else is going to be around in 10 years. The really large scopes, the heavy target rifles for hunters. I suspect a lot of hunters, as they get some experience walking out there at those heavy target rifles with the big scopes on them, eventually they're going to start to say after walking two, three, four miles, they're going to start thinking, darn, I sure would like one of those old fashioned light rifles. <laughs> It's a lot easier to carry and does the same thing. Okay, so we don't know how this is going to play out. We're just going to have to wait and see. But one thing I did think was pretty curious in all of this. Used to when we said combination cartridge, we meant it could be used for a lot of different types of hunting, a lot of different game. 243, great varmint cartridge, great... Um, pronghorn antelope cartridge, great deer cartridge. 260 Remington. It could be used as a combination cartridge easily. Load it with lighter bullets, you got a varmint round, put the heavier bullets in it, you got pronghorn, predator, coyotes, um, great deer cartridge. 
I personally wouldn't use it on elk, but hey, I don't know anything about elk. Okay, 6.5 Creedmoor, and the new way of thinking, when we say combination cartridge, we mean, well, we can shoot it at the range and we can go hunting with it. It works in a tactical rifle that we can shoot at the range and take hunting. I don't know how this is going to play out. None of us do. We're all guessing at this point. But it is going to be interesting to see. And now for my Christmas present. Remington Model 700. And it's chambered in. If you, you already guessed it. 280 Remington. Yeah, it just seems so appropriate to get an old obsolete hunting rifle chambered in an old obsolete cartridge. Yeah, as we're talking about a cartridge, the 260, that is quickly on its way to becoming obsolete, which, hey, all of this is really starting to make me question exactly what does the term obsolete mean anymore? And is that a good thing now? I don't know, but we'll definitely be talking about this one more in the future. Okay, and now, I want to wish every single one of you a Merry Christmas. And I hope all of you just absolutely have a ball today and enjoy this day as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, this is the most special day of the year. God bless, and we'll see you next time.